27 to 24, only four seconds left. The Colts have the ball on their own 47 yard line. Miracle in Buffalo. The Miracle in Buffalo. Final play of the game. This is fourth and 11. Rivers backs the throw. Gonna heave it way downfield on a Hail Mary. Final score, Buffalo 27 and the Colts 24. Love you, brother. Love you, brother. Love you too, bro. You may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. In fact, it may be necessary to encounter the defeats so you can know who you are, what you can rise from, and how you can come out of it. Everybody can hear me? The season didn't end the way we wanted it. We don't have a finish line. There's not a finish line here. It's just, this is our journey, and we're gonna have you know, great moments during that journey, and we're gonna have low ones. We're at a start over point, as we are at every end of every season, and we'll grow from it, and we'll move forward from it, we'll learn from it. Everything you do in life, th there's gonna be moments of failure, and you gotta get up. And sometimes it tests you to really know who you are. I know this, we have the right group of men, we have the right group of coaches, we have the right group of front office staff and scouts, we have everybody in this organization we believe in. The camaraderie, the sense of team, coming together, solving problems, that's what's always attracted me to this game. We gotta continue to improve, we gotta improve the roster, we gotta grow as a scouting and coaching staff. The effort should not be any different of being 11 and five, 12 and four, winning the Super Bowl. We wanna have a growth mindset at all points where we're always continuing to, to get better, to push, to challenge. What can we do better? How can we get better? We're always tweaking our process to make it better. You have to. You don't want things to get stale, and you want to stay on top of, of new ways and new ways of thinking. Our scouts have done a tremendous job scouting and covering our players that need to be covered. It's going to be a little bit helter-skelter here for a while, but it is what it is. We'll adjust. We adjusted with the draft. We adjusted with off-season work. We adjusted with the season. That's what we do. In this business, relationships is big time. Hey, guys. Mike DeReese, area scout with the Indianapolis Colts. On my way to Syracuse, New York for a Syracuse Wake Forest football game. It's gonna be good to get to see these guys live since we didn't get a real opportunity to go see them during training camp because of the lack of travel due to COVID. The drive is about five hours from where I live in New York. Throughout these five hours, I usually use it for some phone calls, talk to potentially coaches, sometimes agents family members. I probably go to around 60 schools a year, but cover about 90 to 100 schools in the area. In a normal year, I'll probably spend two weeks out and then go back home for three, four days, then spend two weeks out. Hello, I'm Phoenix Mayor Kate Gallego. We're in uh, Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport right now. My name's Chris McGay. I'm the West Coast Area Scout for the Colts. I'm getting ready to take off on a two-day trip across the West Coast to go see two different Pac-12 games, uh, and I'm going to take you along with me. My area is 10 states, I believe. I go Arizona, then I go west from there, up to Washington, east over to Montana, and then I work down through Colorado. Life on the road is different this year. It was just different, you know, that's all. You just had to adapt. With Chris being on the West Coast, with a lot of California being shut down, he had to find different ways to get the information. We're not allowed to go to the schools to see practice, so seeing these guys live, the only way to do it is to go to games this year. So it's a lot more flights this year. It's a lot more rental cars. First things first, figure out where to go, and it's a lot shorter trips. Do I prefer the games over the school visit over over the games, um, 
yeah, probably you get more out of a school visit than just going to a game. But with the restrictions this year, seeing them live at a game is is invaluable in my opinion. So I'll take that over not being able to see them at all. The technology is so good, we get access to games quickly. Now it was about digging into the character. He has a way and connections to be able to get the information. And I would say that's a real strength of, of Mike also. In the past, you're able to get on the field, talk to coaches, see the players up close and personal. This year, because of COVID restrictions, you had to stand back towards the stands. The personal relationships that you've had, you can't go see those individuals. Teresa has a lot of personal connections with people throughout his area. He's able to have access to them when some people might not. Hello. Yo, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, man? How's it going? The relationships that you build allows you to make phone calls at times in which it's not easy for everyone else to make phone calls. You're gonna lean on, on the relationships that you make at the schools. That's how you're gonna get the critical information you need. That includes the measurables maybe that we didn't get this year, the high weight speed stuff. So you're gonna lean on just the different people that you've worked to build relationships with over the past however many years you've been an area scout in that area to kind of bridge the gap with information that maybe you didn't have going into the fall. All right, I'm outside Husky Stadium here. Home of the Washington Huskies, the dogs, they take on Utah. Usually a lot of NFL prospects on the field at once. Originally, my, my plans for the weekend were Cal Stanford on Friday, and then Saturday I was going to go to Arizona State, see Utah play at Arizona State, but that game was canceled Tuesday of this week. So just like the rest of the world, you got to adjust on the fly. You've got to be able to adjust on the fly. We wish it was a smooth road, but there's always going to be bumps. There's always going to be a right turn that you didn't think you had to, had to make. It's about, uh, oh, I don't know, 90 minutes before kickoff or so, two hours. Pick up on some things you can't see on tape here in person, see what they look like physically, see how they move around athletically. You had to take it almost game by game, and with each game, try to maximize the time you had you have as close as you can get to the players just to try to see them physically. You know, check out their demeanor before pregame. Maybe they're focused, dialed in, maybe they're the hype type. It was giving me a chance to see how the individuals warmed up prior to the game and then how they interact with their teammates. You want to see how he's reacting to the, the atmosphere, which was different this year with regards to no fans no noises, and if they have the same type of energy, the same type of focus that they would normally have when a game is packed with fans. All right, checked in here from the hotel. I'm at Marriott in Oakland. Game got over a little bit ago, just got back here a few minutes ago. It was a good game though, Stanford won. Got some good notes. Back at the hotel, I'll type it up, put it into, into the computer system, our scouting system, get those notes in there and try to find something to eat, which maybe a little tricky here in Oakland. That was kind of funky, trying to find places to eat. You had to get creative for sure. You start planning ahead when you're gonna eat. COVID numbers are up and so restaurants are shut down and whatnot. Yeah, a lot of swings and misses on food options. Like you pull up and the places you shut down, there's nobody there. I have to make sure that it's open. So you call about 45 minutes in advance so you can pick up your order and go. I'm gonna get my takeout, bring it to the hotel. Right now we're at halftime. It's a chance for uh, scouts to go get a chance to eat. Um, for us in particular, due to COVID, uh, everything's going to be um, our box lunches. I said there's one spot open down the street, so you going to try to check that out. I could eat, but you had to eat outside. You know, it was chilly, so you, you got a coat on and whatnot. You're sitting by one of those makeshift fire lamp things. Yeah, that was a little weird, too. I remember a couple of years ago, I think Bell was in this area. And I told him about this spot, and he he went up there and uh, and ate, and sent me a couple of messages back saying like, "Oh my, this place was great, food was awesome, atmosphere was awesome. You you gotta try the ribs." <laughs> that was my best Ballard impersonation. It's 5:41 in the morning, Sunday morning. Just getting to the rental car return. Got an early flight back to back to Phoenix, back home. Early flight gets me home in time, though, to see the, the Colts and the Titans, which is a big, big game, so I'm excited for that. Excited to get home. Uh, excited to see my wife and my pregnant wife at that, so 
all in all, it was, a, it was a really good weekend, a really productive weekend, shooting around two different games. I was able to see four different Pac-12 teams in each of those schools. You know, had a lot of guys that will be part of the draft discussion in the coming months. A really productive weekend, and it's been fun bringing you guys along on the journey. Just got back from the road. Favorite part of coming back is coming home to see the family. So excited. Always great to see them. So great trip. Go Colts. The reason for a lot of our success is because of your work. You've done outstanding work. And the challenges we're about to have, uh, I think we all know, the lack of access, we're gonna have to navigate not having a combine this year. So it's gonna be different. Your work and your contacts and digging is gonna be critical for us. You know, we know the player we're getting. We're breaking off the tape. I mean, that's what we're doing. You've got to continue to dig on the tape, and I know you have all fall. So just looking at what we have to get done. I think we all know this is the number one need for us. In terms of our draft last year, really good. I mean, excellent work, Bob. We'll continue to draft because I have faith in this group to get it done. All right, let's go to work. This is a day where Carson Wentz is coming. You have a quarterback, Colts fans. This is a no-brainer. You do it, and then you leave it up to this team. How much of this has to do with Frank Reich? 